the last Vlogmas episode? Good Lord. Okay, well... What's up, cookies? Oh, welcome back. And if you're new here, you might as well just get comfortable. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I talk about all things fashion in and around it. Sometimes I take you all along my life in New York City as an entrepreneur, and it's a beautiful struggle sometimes. But I love to share it anyway. So in this episode, I wanted to talk about different habits and mindsets and approaches to shopping that I will not be taking into the new year or I will be taking into the new year. And I'm going to translate them as best as I can to be applicable to you guys that are watching the cookies. And the first thing that came to my mom really liked the what I'm gonna wear videos and just planning a week in advance of what I'm going to wear to specific events according to the weather. I found that that makes me use way more of my closet than I would, you know, dressing myself the day of or depending on my mood the day of. I think creating a standard of, okay, let me prepare myself on Sunday for what I have going on this week and with that I'm going to plan out my outfits. It just made more use of my closet. It made me feel more organized. It made me feel way more aware um, and just it's just a good habit and I think I would really like to continue that and obviously you guys love those videos so obviously I'm going to keep doing those videos and just showing you my thought process and how I style myself. So definitely going to be keeping the planning a week ahead. This is going to be a little controversial, I think, but I'm not going to be using Klarna. Mm -mm. I'm going back into a space where, you know, I realized, and this is the thing, I may have felt like I needed to wear more color to keep up, but I've never felt like I had to buy things to keep up with the Joneses. I've bought things to keep up with my damn self. And myself is too damn much sometimes, okay? She spends too much. And then I'm like, oh, you know what? I've gone over budget this month. Let me put it on Klarna. Let me do an afterpay. And while they're great tools, you know, to space out the budget, I found that I've actually used it way too much. And then there's no point because I'm spending the same amount with all the... You get what I mean? So no more Klarna and I'm re-implementing a rule that I used to have in 2019 where if I cannot afford the item four times over in cash in that moment, I have no business buying it. So I'm stepping away from Klarna, Afterpay, and what's the other? There's other ones, right? There's, there's a bunch of other ones. PayPal has one or Amazon has one. And th there's a firm. There's a green one. I'm not using any of them. If I cannot afford it four times, it cannot be. It, I can't take it home. It is what it is. I am done with Klarna. After everything pays off at the end of the month, I'm, I'm closing off the apps. And that is the rule to be applied. It's just better to go it, for me. I, I don't stress out. Oh, oh my gosh. I still didn't pay that off. What the hell? You know, I don't want to go through that anymore. It's silly. It's stupid. And, you know, I know for a fact it's not me just buying things because I see other people buy. There are things that I have not shown y'all that I've bought. And out of like feeling like I, I'm just doing too much like I feel that whenever I'm stressed or when I'm sad I'm being very vulnerable with this and I know that you know there's a better way of handling things but sometimes when I'm super stressed out or you know I feel like I want to make a power move of some sort I shop I shop and I want to look more into that and I'd rather shopping just be a delight. I'd rather shopping be a fulfilling of a void in my closet and not in myself. Um, but yeah, I stress shop. I sad shop. Um, and sometimes I like rush to buy things because I feel like it's going to sell out. And that leads me to my next thing. 
I'm not going to rush to purchase things as soon as they come out. I'm going to wait with the way that the luxury market is looking the last couple of months, right? Luxury retailers are realizing that the world is going bonkers, okay? Everything is inflated, you know, cost of living is going high. People are definitely recalibrating what they feel are priority purchases and necessities and making sure that they have the jobs and the income to afford just the regular basic things so with that being said i'm noticing there's a trend in some luxury retailers that they are having to put a lot of their inventory on sale and while we're in this space i'm going to take advantage of that i'm not going to be buying things at full price i like for example i wanted those for ferragamo video pumps for a really long time as soon as they came out but i waited for them to go a little bit on sale because I knew it was going to last. I knew it was going to last on the shelf that I would find it somewhere, whether it be, you know, from the actual designer or it lands on Essence on sale or Satire or Farfetch. Like there's so many different things. And a lot of these e e-tailers are having experiences where they have to put everything on sale. Farfetch just got bought by a different brand, not Amazon. I'll put the name of the brand that bought them out, but literally it just happened the other day. And you know, these things are happening where we have the opportunity to buy things for a much easier price. Um, so I'm definitely going to pump the brakes on when things hit the sales floor. Um, Unless the essay tells me like this is it, it's only one size run, you know, get it while you can type of thing. If they know the backstory of it, of it all, then I feel comfortable doing that. But going forward, we're waiting for things to go on sale because luxury retailers, they price things so high at this point. It's like, do you actually deserve my full dollar? I don't know. It's not feeling like it is right now. So... The other thing that I want to do is making sure if I'm going to be buying any clothes, which at this point I have no needs, right? Except for a camel coat. I really want a camel menswear oversized jacket. Anyway, I don't want to buy anything right off the rack unless it's close to tailored perfection. If I have to do a little bit, just a tiny bit, that's fine. But if I have to really restructure a whole item... It's going to be a hard pass. It's going to be a hard pass. It really is. I'm at the point where I, I have curated a wonderful wardrobe that I feel really good about, that I feel like I fit really well, um, that I can use in the future. And ain't no reason for me buying. I bought so many things this year that were so big and oversized that I had to really get restructured, had to add fabric to all the things, and it cost way more than the actual item for me to do that. Now, I love the fact that there's opportunity to get things tailored and restructured. I'm really excited to actually dive into um, Artelier Jolie, Angelina Jolie's Artelier, because that that is a concept that they're, they basically are doing. They can tailor things, they can alter things, they can restructure things. So if something comes up, yeah, obviously, I will take advantage of, of a place like that. But right off the rip, if it don't fit, baby, I'm not taking it home. If it's not close to fitting, baby, I'm not taking it home. I'm not dealing with too many projects. I myself am not am not a designer yet. So I'm not going to stress myself out with having an, an abundance of clothes in my closet that I have to take to the tailor and spend so much money on that the ticket price of that turns into a bigger ticket price than one of the actual items. So you know how I like to call my tushy area ass back? Yeah, well, I'm gonna continue calling it an ass back. Like that's just how I feel. That's what it is. It's one, it's one of the same. It is what it is, y'all. But <laughs> I'm not gonna feel ashamed of my body. I have to tell you like, while I joke about that part of my body, I felt ashamed about it quite a lot until this month. And I feel that I wore that cat suit to that dinner for mind games and it gave me a lot more confidence about my slim body, you know. And this is one one topic that I'm going to cover a little bit more next month when it comes to um, some of the lifestyle videos that I want to implement. Um, a couple years ago, maybe almost two years ago, I got really sick with 
a food or something that I ate, me and Carlos both. And ever since then, I have had an issue <clears throat> with eating, eating from new places. I have a very consistent menu of food that I eat because I'm so afraid of getting sick like that again. And come to find out it is actually an eating disorder. Um, and I just realized that maybe like four months ago that I've been dealing with an eating disorder where I'm just afraid to get sick off of food. And because of that, my weight has been super consistent, maintained. I've always been pretty small, but the last couple of years with COVID, I got really sick with COVID. Then I got really sick like that. And I just feel like I've been small this whole time and I felt like I was supposed to gain weight or get muscular again and I haven't been able to. And people comment on my weight all the time like, oh my God, have you seen Carolyn? She got so skinny. You know, and either it's a good thing for them or they're shaming it. I don't like it when people talk about my body because it made me feel ashamed. But I'm no longer feeling that way. I don't feel bad for being small. I don't feel bad for working through an eating disorder. I feel proud of my body and I feel like I'm going to be, I've been trying new foods, I've been trying new restaurants and not feeling scared or nervous about it. You know, if my stomach's upset, I leave the house still, like I still do what I need to do. I don't let my anxiety go over. There's a lot of things I'm gonna talk about next month that'll bring a little bit more light to this because I feel like a lot of people might be dealing with this and not realize it, but I'm gonna be proud of the body that I'm in and I'm going to celebrate it and I'm not going to shame it anymore. So that's one of the things that I'm going to be taking into the new year. We're not going to body shame ourselves anymore. I'm going to still call it back ass though because that's what it is. The ass in the back is the same. But I got to recharge my video, my, my battery. Hold on. I'll be right back cookies. I'll be right back. Okay. So we're back. Another thing that I want to go into 2024 for different mindset is... If the item is not an investment piece, I'm also going to leave it behind. Now, here's the thing. I'm not turning my nose up at fast fashion. Y'all know I'm a Zara girl. Like I love Zara. But if the hand of it, the make of it isn't sturdy, no matter where it's coming from, if it's from Zara, if it's from Nordstrom's, if it's from Bergdorf, if the hand doesn't feel good, if it doesn't feel like it has longevity to it, if it doesn't at some point kind of for some things, if it doesn't have a resale value, I don't want to build with that. I don't want that in my closet. I, I just feel like, you know, it adds to the waste that we talk about often when it comes to ethical fashion sustainable fashion things of that nature if it's not something that's investment worthy it's not sustainable for my wardrobe or the earth so investments only i'm even i'm actually going to talk actually probably highlighted this a little bit in the vlog from friday yeah yeah friday's vlog i touched on it where you know i go shopping to hermes and I'm starting my relationship there because I do want a Birkin bag. I feel like that's an heirloom piece. I want to be able to buy two within the next year. Hopefully, if the guy's nice, we'll see with that video. Because this is Thursday night. I'm filming this. Um, I have an appointment tomorrow. But hopefully, that appointment went well. And I start my journey because I know that I want that investment piece to have as an heirloom. But also, if I need to resell the second one. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm just thinking about... I want shopping to be more like chess for me. I have to actually learn how to play chess to say that. Y'all know what I mean and I'm going to learn chess next year. That's it. And also with that being said, the investment piece, I want to solely focus on handbags in 2024. I said that that, that was going to be something I was going to do for this past year, but I got super distracted. Um, with different things, obviously y'all saw, but I want to focus more on the handbag space and investing in really good quality leather bags that have a resale factor, but also just stand the test of time that could just be banged up around and, and just look amazing and impeccable over the years. And I also want to start investing more in jewelry. I've had the pleasure of working with brands like Dylan Lex and Concept 26 Aziza Handcrafted, Wahadun NYC. I know I owe you guys a jewelry video, but um, 
especially with Concept 26, just learning more about gold and diamonds and gems. Even Aziza Handcrafted, she's going more into the, the, the higher end gem space. She is a certified gemologist and just learning about the different opportunities, the, the different types of gems and stones that are out there that are actually way better than diamonds at that, you know. I feel like I want to invest in jewelry way more. My grandmother from Aruba, she always had a little bit of gold for us, whether it be an earring or our nameplate or a necklace, anything. She would always gift us in jewelry and gold jewelry. And, you know, I don't, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with costume jewelry or things that are not made of metal or gems, but I do want to be able to have pieces again that I could pass on to again. If shit hits the fan, I could go pawn it. Honestly, like I'm just being honest. Like I can resell it and get something. I just want to be able to have those types of things because I, I want it to mean more, you know? I don't want it to be something I wear once and then that's it. And sure, like I have my, my listen, look at this. I have my costume jewelries, my, my Mango bought pieces, but I also have, so I bought this from Mango right before that event that I had, and it was a set of two. I never even wore these. And as soon as I took this out the pack, it broke. And I think it was like 40 bucks. And they're really beautiful. I love this earring. I'm actually like thinking just wearing this one piece so it can actually look like kind of abstract together. I think that looks pretty cool. That's why I kept them. But I'm like, yo, you know, I, I wanted to wear these for this season. And this broke and they have such a weird return policy thing. And also like after that event, they did not treat my friend really well. He's no longer with the company. I don't want to talk about it, but you know, I feel like I don't want those types of experiences when I'm buying jewelry anymore. I don't want to be upset that something tarnishes or breaks over time. I'd rather wear the same thing over and over because it stands the test of time. So really my mindset going into next year, all in all, is making investment, better investment choices in my wardrobe. Um, you know, I love the fact that I have great tailors, but I want to make sure that I'm not going overboard with having to revise a whole entire garment because I'm just overzealous like I'm getting excited and basically redesigning a whole piece and then it becomes more expensive than I actually bought at the store you know just thinking about long-term things or not feeling ashamed of my body and just dressing it as it is and being proud of it you know I think that sometimes when we work from a place of insecurity or rushing at things you know we get buyer's remorse we feel bad we feel like oh why did I do that you know if I can afford something four times over then I shouldn't have it I shouldn't have it. There's no need for it. And just double checking the quality of everything, you know, over time, it just it wears better. It washes better. You can pass it down to someone or if something comes up or if I just feel like selling it, you know, I can make money off of it. I just don't want to make decisions that make me feel any type of regret or annoyance. And going through purging my closet a few times this year not once, a few times, you know, that was a constant feeling just like, why did I buy that? Like, what's the point of this? You know, no one's going to want this anyway. Like, this is trash. Look at the hand of this. Feel the hand of this. I don't want to feel those things anymore. So wrapping up the 2023 year and vlogmas, those are my thoughts when it comes to how to shop in 2024 and forward. I really appreciate y'all watching me every day. This has been really dope. I've I've committed to something. Not me about to cry over Vlogmas. I committed to something. Things came up. I, I had messed up and 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 left my camera at, at, at my friend's house, and I still managed to make something that day. You know, I put my mind to something, and. After years of being inconsistent and allowing people to get in my head to stop my flow, you know, I became obsessed with this and consistent. And I have to tell you, I'm so proud of myself. And I hope 
after two days of not posting and, and taking a break, I get bored with it and get right back into the swing of this. Now I should not have any issues posting consistently, even at twice a week. You know what I mean? Um, this community is such a pleasure to, to be around. You guys have pushed me to a great space. You guys ask me questions or comment, really amazing feedback. Even the things that weren't so great, it, it strengthened me. You know what I'm saying? So I really appreciate y'all subscribing to my channel and helping me grow and putting putting me in front of brands that I love to work with. Um, and the community feels real everyone's engaged it feels healthy it doesn't feel fake it doesn't feel like we're trying too hard you know what i mean like it feels like a good village and i'm just in a space of creativity and it feels really great it feels healthy it really does so i appreciate y'all um tuning in writing um, subscribing, sharing it, using the bits of inspo and, and posting pictures and tagging me in them. Like that is, it, it is purely a blessing to have this platform as a space to create and connect with people in, in a way that I've always wanted to, that I always in my heart that I knew I could. And it's just up from here. And I really hope that y'all understand like the depth of how important this is to me to have done Vlogmas by myself every day, no team coming up with concepts. I am so happy that God put something on my heart and my chest and my soul. And I've done the work to meet him halfway with his timing. It has been nothing but a pleasure so don't forget to hit that subscribe button if don't forget to press that like button tell your friends share the video do all the things let me know your thoughts let me know what you guys aren't going to take mindset wise into 2024 what are you adopting what off what what items off of this list that i created for myself do you feel like you want to adopt too um but yeah thank y'all so much okay i didn't ruin the makeup I didn't really make it look. I look good. I look good still. Ow. Okay. I'll see y'all in the next episode. It might be in January. It might be on Wednesday. Who knows? I don't want to stop. But thank you. I'll see y'all later, cookies. Bye.